everyone, this is Mindy Egan for Lawn Fawn, and in today's video, I am going to share some of my hot foiling tips. I was super excited to see Lawn Fawn come out with hot foil plates because I absolutely love the look of hot foiling. So I am starting with the Snowflake background hot foil plate. I want to combine that with some ink blending, and so this is the process that I like to do. I start with my ink blending first. Now for my background, I have a piece of 80 pound white cardstock that is cut to uh, eight and a half by five and a half. And I started ink blending on the bottom with antique linen distress oxide ink. Then I come in with worn lipstick and I'm gonna kind of go between the two colors to help uh, make that a smooth, seamless transition. Then I'm going to put some seedless preserves right above the worn lipstick and I just keep going back and forth between those two colors and blending tools just to make that nice and smooth. You can use any type of blending tool that you have on hand. I like using the foam blending tools when I have a whole background that I want to ink blend. Now to make sure that I have ink over the entire area that I want to hot foil, I'm going to bring that foil plate back in and just kind of eyeball it. I have a little bit of room there at the top, so I'm going to come in with some chipped sapphire at the very top there. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to foil or what I'm going to use out of the background, but I want to make sure that this is complete so that I am ready for my card. Now I just keep going back between the seedless preserves and that chipped sapphire to complete this. Now to do the hot foiling, I find that I get better results if I ink blend first and then foil on top. I have found in my other cards that if I do the foiling first and add the ink, my foiling just isn't as bright. And now if you have a hot foil machine, you can place your cardstock panel on top of that while it's warming up. That is going to help dry your ink. You need that background to be completely dry in order to foil on top of it. Now to test my background, I'm gonna just sprinkle on embossing powder. If it slides right off, then I know my background is dry. Now I'm placing my hot foil plate. I'm just resting it on top of my cardstock and I'm trimming out a piece of silver foil that's a little bit larger than the actual foil plate. Now this next part is really all kind of personal preference, but this is what works for me. So I have my foil cut just a little bit larger than the foil plate, and I'm placing that on top of my blended panel so it's pretty side up. So the part that we want to show is facing up. Then I'm gonna take the hot foil plate and I'm placing it so the design part is face down. And I'm gonna have that so the foil is sticking out just a little bit. I'm gonna take some low tack tape and I'm gonna hold this down onto the cardstock with that low tack tape. I make sure the tape is touching the foil plate, the cardstock, and the foil. This helps so that my plates don't shift or I'm very klutzy. So if I'm when I'm moving it from the glimmer machine to my die cutting machine, I tend to bump things and it shifts. So this is just eliminating any errors. I know my hot foil machine was ready because that second green light was on. I placed my sandwich so that the hot foil plate is touching the glimmer machine. I hit the timer button and then I placed my two shims on top. Now when that green light stops blinking, I know that this is ready. I can disengage it from the platform and I'm gonna run it through my die cut machine. We only need this platform. So I'm gonna just slowly run that through the machine and that's going to press that foil into my blended background. Now another thing I like to do is just take that whole platform, I flip it over onto my work surface and then I engage it back on the glimmer system so it's ready for the next time that I foil. So now we gotta be careful because this plate can be pretty warm. So I'm carefully peeling back that tape on the bottom and then I'm going to pull my sleeve down and kind of flip my cardstock so the hot foil plate kind of flips off and that's just protecting my hands because it's a pretty warm plate and I can peel that off of my cardstock. Now I can pick up this foil to reveal this perfectly foiled background and just look how those snowflakes are popping off of that blended panel. There is so much shimmer and shine to this. I absolutely love this. Another thing I wanna add to this is the Snow Flurries backdrop. So this is really pretty because it has a snowflake border that's gonna go around my panel. So I'm trimming that out with 80 pound white cardstock, held that down and just ran that through the die cut machine. And then using my pokey tool, I'm just popping out that middle piece and the little inside pieces. So I'm trimming my foil panel down, so it's gonna be about four and a quarter by five and a half, and then that border is going to fit perfectly right over the top. 
For the middle portion of this card, I am going to use the Build a Snowman. I thought he was really super cute to add into my kind of snow flurries background. So I have him already die cut out. I have the white cardstock here and I'm adding just a really light blue Copic marker, adding flicks from the edge towards the inside just to kind of give this some roundness to him so he's not so white. And then I can start piecing him together. So there is a piece from that Build a Snowman set that cuts out that goes behind the eyes and the mouth. So I trimmed that out of black cardstock and just attached it with some liquid glue. Then I have the scarf and the top of his hat that I believe I cut from mermaid cardstock. So I added that band to the hat and that hat I believe is cut from storm cloud. You could do the black. I just thought that the kind of dark gray fit better in with my background. Now I have his hands and I'm going to have his arms, sorry, his arms going kind of straight out, but you can put them in any direction. And I'm putting them on just with a little bit of liquid glue and attaching it to the back. He'll have a little carrot for a nose that I'll attach with the liquid glue as well. And then I also have the top hat I'm going to put on top of his head. I thought that I would put it on maybe crooked at first, but I just decided to go straight on with it. Then for the scarf, now this piece I can either have going underneath or on top of the band that goes around his neck. I put it underneath and then this piece will go right on top. I thought about die cutting it out from some pattern paper, but I just thought the pattern paper would be too much pattern going on with the background. So that is where I did it with just some plain cardstock. Now there is some little areas you can die cut out to add cheeks to the snowman. So I definitely did because it's super cute. And then I also have a pink heart that I'm going to add. And this was die cut out of Bally Slippers cardstock. My snowman is all set. So now I need to set the scene and I needed to ground him a little bit in that scene. So I just used the stitched hillside die, die cut that out of some white cardstock. And I'm going to add some tape runner to the back to attach this to my blended panel or my foiled panel. Then I'm going to add some thin foam squares to the back of the snowman and I'm going to add that right in the center. I'm kind of using my border, my snowflake border as a guide. So I'm holding my snowman with my tweezers and just kind of lining it up right in the center and then I can carefully slip that border away and just push him down to make sure he's secured in that area. Then for the snowflake border, I am adding some foam strips to go around at the very edge of this. This also would make a super cute shaker card, except having the snowman on the front. Now these thin foam strips, or the foam strips I added, are just a little bit higher than my snowman. So I'll be able to layer that right over the top. Now all I have left to add is a sentiment, which I planned on putting right above his head, but I'm going to actually break that sentiment up a little bit. So I have one here from the Snow Much Fun stamp set, and I'm using a Misty ruler to kind of push those three separated sentiments down so they're all nice and straight. Then I pick that up with the door of my Misty. I'm inking this up with some black ink and just stamping that down carefully so I don't distort my letters at all. And then I'm just trimming these down with my paper trimmer, but I want three separate uh, sentiments, so that's why I have them kind of spaced out the way they are. I'm adding those same thin foam squares behind the sentiments, but you could also add dimension by just stacking small strips of spare cardstock behind them too. So the love ya is going right above the head, snow is going kind of off on the side, and then much is going to go on the other side. So those fit in super perfect by me trimming them down and kind of separating out my sentiment. I have a few small details that I wanted to add to my snowman. The first one was adding some little dots, some polka dots to his scarf. I didn't want to do uh, a pattern that stuck out a lot. So just some small dots using a white gel pen. And then I'm adding the sparkle glaze to the heart and also to the band on his top hat. And then that is going to finish off my card. So it actually came together really quick. I really hope these tips in hot foiling have helped you. I really love hot foiling because I just love the look that it gives. And there's so many different colors of foil available that you could do this with. So once I tilt this up to the light, just check out all of that shine. And then that little bit of sparkle I add with that sparkle glaze pen. I hope you enjoyed today's video and tips. Thank you so much for joining me today. See you soon.